So often we have heard from health officials that getting as many people vaccinated as possible around the world is key to getting this virus under control. Well, a dynamic duo of scientists at the Texas Children's Center for Vaccine Development and Baylor College of Medicine were able to create a new low-cost COVID vaccine that could help significantly speed up the fight against COVID and slow down the amount of lives lost globally. Joining us now is half of that duo, Dr. Maria Batazzi. Doctor, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Let's talk about this new vaccine, Corbivax. Explain to us how it was developed at such a low cost and how does that cost compare to the others that are already out there on the market? Well, thank you, Lindsay, so much for having me. And yes, this is uh, the fruit of our collaboration for the last 20 months with uh, the company Biological E, who's, of course, trademarked this vaccine uh, called Corbivax. Uh, we have 10 years of experience making protein-based vaccines, which we use the yeast system to make these synthetic proteins, in this case, the receptor binding domain protein of the spike pro, uh, uh, of the spike of the COVID-19 virus. We transfer this technology to them, co-developed it with them. And as you can see, it's uh, simple in the context of vaccine development. It, it can be scaled at in large quantities. Biological E showed a very promising safety and efficacy data in India, and it's been authorized now for its use uh, in India. Yeah, it's very exciting. And unlike Pfizer and Moderna, most of your funding came from private investors, including the Austin-based company Tito's Vodka. Uh, what's the fundraising process like for a vaccine like this? Well, first of all, it was uh, challenging at best, but very privileged to indeed having received so many uh, groups, foundations, uh, individuals who really believed in our strategy. Uh, we indeed got some seed funds from the National Institute of Health. Certainly, they enabled our, our work 10 years ago to look at coronavirus vaccines for SARS and MERS. Uh, but of course, there's priorities. I mean, we are a small research uh, lab within Texas Children's Hospital and Baylor College of Medicine, but with a big heart trying to do big things. And I think people really um, saw the, the value of uh, advancing this type of work. Um, and really decolonizing a little bit of how vaccines are being made. It's really transferring and giving the opportunity to many around the world, manufacturers and producers around the world, um, that really can make vaccines for their own countries or for their, for their own regions. And I want to pull up an article that our Houston station KTRK did back in March of 2020, right before COVID took over the world. Uh, the article's headline reads, Potential Coronavirus Vaccine May Be Tucked Away in Houston Freezer. What's your reaction to seeing that article today, almost two years later? Oh, amazing, right? I mean, yes, we still have that vaccine in the freezer. You know, it's our old SARS prototype. Uh, we actually had been showing that, you know, there's a value potentially of using um, uh, even an older uh, molecule uh, to cross-protect against uh, future coronavirus uh, uh, um, variants, for example. So, in fact, one of our uh, next strategies is can we even reevaluate this whole concept of multivalency or even um, doing universal type of vaccines by mixing and matching uh, uh, vaccines against many of these different coronaviruses. But uh, that clearly just uh, reminds me that um, uh, having been worked, uh, the sustainable capacity of doing research in an area really uh, teaches us to how to respond to emergencies such as this. So my hope is that we continue supporting research and development, especially um, academic units and, and small units that uh, like enable others to really advance uh, products such as this ones. And a large part of your mission for health equity is driven by your own personal experience as someone uh, raised and educated in Honduras. During an interview at your institution, you were asked about your main goals with vaccine research. And you said, my aspiration is to go beyond Houston, beyond Texas and the U.S. I have never disconnected myself from my roots in Latin America, especially Central America. With the development of this vaccine, do you feel like mission accomplished? Well, uh Partially mission accomplished because we still have lots to do, right? And I think more than anything is you're right. It's feeling proud that I was uh, trained in the National University of Honduras. I think it's very important to highlight that we get as high quality as an education as anywhere and therefore incentivizing more young scientists to don't discourage um, uh, 
look for how to open doors, how to you know build your networks, um, and certainly seeing more of this concept that we need more um, research locally uh, to find solutions for local problems. And I think that uh, it, my role is, as I said at that time, is to continue forging those relationships and incentivizing the young scientists to um, get into this kind of field, even though it not, it's not easy, but it's definitely very rewarding, especially when you want to do something good for uh, so many people around the world. Well, Dr. Maria Batazzi, we thank you so much for your time. And for everyone around the world, we are grateful for the fruits of your labor. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.